everyone, I'm here with Kenya Moses, and she is both a well-being and a fitness coach, and also on top of that, she's an author. She specializes in working with women like us, so I think you're really going to enjoy hearing from her today. She believes that exercise and mindfulness should be considered self-care and not just chores on our list. Now, you rarely hear about exercise and mindfulness being lumped in with self-care, and I love that idea. I think it's such a good way of stressing movement as part of a healthy lifestyle instead of just being this long slog at the gym. So I'd love to start by asking you, how do you use exercise and mindfulness together? Wonderful question, Kelly. You know, exercise and mindfulness for me, is just, it's just a natural part of my life. And I think since I was little, it was just like, I, I was raised at the church and I danced a lot. I started dancing when I was really young Aww. and moving my body was just a natural part of being. And as I became an adult, I realized that I felt my absolute best when I just moved my body in any way that felt good to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, <laughs> I think, I think that you can say, you know, people go in their house or in their living room and they're just dancing to the music. <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> It's like you can see in my house. <laughs> the best. <job. laughs> right. And we don't necessarily connect the dots to that. Right. Oh, when I move my body in a way that feels good to me, like I feel lighter in my mind yeah. and my body. And everything just starts to, you know, fall together. And so when I started recognizing that my clients were really, really benefiting from that, you know, then it just took off and I just decided, you know what, this is, this is, there's something to this. Yeah. And so I, I really just focus on um, not only the physical component, but seeing it as a way of just being and moving in the world in a way that just makes you feel more connected. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like that. It takes away some of that stress of having to go to the gym and exercise. And we we know as professionals that certainly that's not the only way to get movement, but it tends to be what people think of. You know, you see it in magazine articles, on websites, that exercise is something you do in the gym or on a jogging trail. And truly, movement is what we're looking for. And I like that you put it that way with movement. You know? I mean, I'm definitely not saying that, you know, I don't do crunches. Oh, yeah, of course we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Sometimes everybody's just like, yeah, I need to do like some push ups and I need to yeah. do some crunches. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think of just moving our bodies and finding a way that works for us because everyone's yeah. different. You know, some people really like to go to the gym and mm -hmm. sometimes it's the social aspect of working out amongst yeah. other people. It's energetic, you know, yeah. um, but then some people like to just, you know, be at home. And, and when you're not quite sure of what you want to do, you're like, okay, I need to exercise. You know, yeah. what does that mean? And it yeah. seems so daunting. <laughs> It's like, yeah. what do I do? What is, you know, what exercise am I supposed to do to move my body towards certain parts of the body? Yeah. We intuitively know how to move our bodies in a way that it needs, you know? So it's like you wake up in the morning and you might feel a little crickety in your neck or you might yeah. feel something in your lower back. And I usually tell my clients, you know what, just start your day moving your body in a way that's going to make you loosen up and feel good, you know? Good and advice, Yeah. Yeah, and as soon as you start doing that and stop thinking about it, because I think when we overthink it, we're just processing too much, right. trying to read into it, then it becomes complicated, and then the motivation goes away, right. and then you're just like, I quit. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. a theme that, because it's kind of my, if you were to tattoo something on my forehead, it would say, don't make it so hard. That's mm -hmm. been a theme throughout this summit, too, and it's certainly what I say to clients over and over and over, stop making it so hard, nice. you know, just move how it feels good. I love how you say, you know, when you wake up, do what you need to do. Just move in a way that feels good to get you stretched and moving around. Yes, exactly. And you know, I love that. It doesn't have to be so hard. I like yeah. simplicity. I like, keep it simple. Keep yes. it really, really simple yeah. because you know, our lives are complicated enough. Right. <laughs> We don't need to, you know, add on this on top of it and it'd be like, oh my gosh, it's another thing that I have to manage in my day. Right. Like just be in your day and just move your body the way that it feels, you know, that it needs yeah. and you'd be surprised how, how easy it is. And finding something you like 
is incredibly important and will take just using some of that intuition as you move your body. Uh, one of our other speakers, Heidi, on here, she's a group fitness instructor, and she and I were talking about how you find something you enjoy doing in your movement. And I, I think a good connection here is what you're saying with using a little bit of your intuition and just find what you enjoy. Our bodies, it, it depends on the day sometimes, but right. <laughs> you know, I mean, some days you want to just sprint, at least mm -hmm. I do. And then some days you just want to lay down in child's pose for an hour in yoga class and that's it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you, and we should honor that whatever it is our body is feeling. It's like, go with that. And, you know, I like to play games when, whenever I have a, a new client come in and they're like, I don't know what I like. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well let's experiment. Let's just try some things. You know, yeah. I might have them dance a little bit. I'll just put on some music and be like, I'm not going to watch. Just, just move. <laughs> yeah. Move the way you want to move. <laughs> or I'll say, okay, let's, let's go run. Let's go outside. Let's go for a hike. Let's yeah. find what works for you. And you know, some clients find that, you know what? I love connecting with nature. So let's go yeah. for a hike. That makes me feel great. I'm invigorated after and I feel stronger. Some people like yoga. Some people yeah. like to dance. And I think it's just allowing yourself the time to find out what works for you. Mm -hmm. The moment you find it, oh my goodness. It's just like, oh, why was I so stressed yes. about work out? <laughs> That's such a cool idea to use it kind of as a game when you first are helping someone because there's no, you're not going to, you're not going to lose by trying no. something. If you hate it, you can stop. And, right, exactly. <laughs> you, know, you listed so many good options for just getting some activity, hiking, walking, running, you know, yes. dancing. It's all, it all counts. You know, you do, really, there is really no does. prescription for exercise. It just matters that you move more than you sit. Exactly. And, you know, I think in the beginning, if you're just starting, it's fun to ask friends, like, what do you yeah. like to do? Like, just start, create a little list, right? Yeah. And then, you know, kind of categorize them like, oh, these are my top five that I feel like, okay, these might resonate right. with me and start there. And if you go through the five and you're like, yeah, those didn't work, <laughs> you move down the list and you go and eventually you'll find something. And it might be something you mm -hmm. never even imagined it would be, you know, right. like, you know, surfing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I've never surfed, but, you know, the, I you know, play people who love it and get up at the crack of dawn to go to the water. And I think that's amazing. So once you find what works for you and what feels natural to you, because we all have something yeah. that we connect with. We really, really do. And I, I think particularly for women, oftentimes um, I'll speak to women and they'll say, you know, I don't, I, there's nothing physical that I, I connect with. Like I don't do sports. I don't do yeah. this. And I'm like, we're humans. Like we're, we're here to move our yes. body yes. And, <laughs> and connect. So yes. there's something out there. We just have to try. We just have to take that first step. Yeah. Starting with that assumption that there is something for you, you will yeah. find movement that you like. Yes. I, I like that you are allowing them to just tune in to how they feel about it. Yeah, you know, it's so important. And I think, you know, coming back to using your intuition is really the the crutch of, of mindfulness mm -hmm. is that it, it really is just all about following our intuition, using it and finding it. Mm. But that's a whole nother story that some people are like, I don't know what my intuition is, you know, like, no, but you do, <laughs> but you do, yeah. it's like, you know, when you feel that, you know, little ping and, yeah. and, you know, in the middle of your stomach and you're like, oh, or you feel like, oh, I shouldn't go that direction. Or this person's a little off, you know, yeah, like yeah. you cross the street because you think some, you know, like you, you yeah. intuitively feel, you know, you feel, but we don't think about that. We think of it as just like the heebie-jeebies or we get, right, right. <laughs> but it really is our body telling us something. It's an alert system, but it's yeah. also a guidance system, right? And that's, right. I think the best way to move through life is just to really listen to your intuition and not that our brain isn't there for yeah. a reason, but <laughs> it kind of helps us get, not get into certain situations. Yeah, it's always good. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, your intuition, definitely when you're moving, you just know. And then I find that the moment we start moving our body in a way that is natural to us and we're using our intuition, it starts to build mm -hmm. and it starts to seep into the other areas of our life. So whether it's in your work oh. or 
or with your family, your relationships, everything just starts to open up. And it's like, you feel lighter, you feel better in your body, that it just starts to, you know, permeate all those other areas. And it just, it's wonderful. How do we get to that point? So let's say, you know, I'm sure there are attendees out there who are wondering, okay, I haven't really moved since, gosh, it's been a year, maybe since I've been to the gym. How do you help someone besides, you know, the gamifying that you find right. something fun? How would you guide somebody along since, you know, object in motion stays in motion and that also right. makes it the thing? <laughs> <laughs> so luckily for um, some of my clients that, you know, I will actually you know, knock on their door and say, okay, it's right <laughs> Oh, come do me, do me. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and, you know, progressively they're like, okay, okay, you know, and, and then we start that habit. But when you're doing it on your own, I would say, you know, take baby steps and be very gentle with yourself yeah. and set an intention. So I always set my intentions the night before and I'm like, oh, okay, so, smart. you know, I live by my calendar. So if I'm going to work out, it's on my calendar. <laughs> Me and too. I, my, yeah. I treat myself <laughs> as if I'm a client or I'm a very important meeting because I, this, we really are the most important meeting we can have with ourselves. This is self care time, yeah. right? So, if once you understand that, and you're like, okay, so I have an appointment with myself for a half an hour tomorrow mm-hmm. at you know 1:30 p.m. to go for a walk. You must adhere to that, yeah. and I think just become making that a habit and starting really yes. small. Don't go out and be like, okay, now I'm going to go run three miles at 1:30. <laughs> right. I have. I've been living a sedentary life for years. I'm going to go do that. That's admirable. Right. It could happen. I love that. I love the enthusiasm. But I think it's great to just start small. Start with start with a small walk. Go with the yeah. coworker. Go with a friend. Do it with family after dinner. Yeah. Um, make it yeah. Make it a family affair so it doesn't feel like oh, you know. Try to make it a little social. I think it's fun. Right. It's great to work out with someone that you like. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It makes it more fun and you yeah. have accountability built in. Exactly. Cool. So I think, you know, scheduling it, putting on your calendar, setting your intention the night before, you know, and looking at your calendar before you go to bed and saying, yeah. okay, well, tomorrow at one thirty, I have an appointment with myself that I'm going to keep. And oftentimes maybe say verbalizing, it doesn't work. Write it down, write it down, you know, say yeah. a little something, you know, <laughs> you know, I, can you Moses, dedicate myself to working out tomorrow at 1.30 yes. and, you know, whatever it is that you need to do, um, do it, you know, and yeah. just get that into your brain and get into your body. And when you go to sleep and, you know, dream about having that walk and, you know, the next day it'll be easier because it's already set. It's ingrained in you. Yeah. It's on the computer. It's a part of your day now. It's not a, a an afterthought like, oh, I need to work out now or I should try to find some time to do it. Right. You've already included it. So, yeah, that's so smart because when you treat yourself like an important meeting and, you know, it's hard to make excuses because you wouldn't do that for a client or really anybody else in your life. You, you know, OK, I've been known to bail a few times when we're talking about going out on a weekend, but certainly right. not an actual meeting with somebody. And yeah. I like that idea of writing it down and then setting the int- intention the night before. So it's just on your calendar. It's just what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Think of it. So oftentimes, you know, if you work in the corporate world or wherever you work and say you have a meeting with a client that maybe it's not your favorite client, right? You're not going to cancel that meeting because this person's not your favorite client because you need to still serve them. Too bad. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So you might be feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do it, you know, the night before. But remember, you know what, I, I am my most important client and mm-hmm. I need to put as much energy into my relationship with myself as I do yes. with everybody else. So that's, you know, beautiful. I, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think it's, anyone can do it. It doesn't matter where you are right now. If whether you've been living a sedentary life mm-hmm. for the last 10 years, you can just start something really small, you know, yeah. don't just, don't go out the gate sprinting, right? Just right. take small and be like, okay, even if it's 10 minute walk, even if it's just 10 minutes, if, even if it's like five minutes of stretching, you know, like right. just, it's something, it's something. Yes. And I think that oftentimes we get in our minds that, oh, you know, if it's not this amount of time, if I'm not like yeah. sweating profusely, then I'm not doing anything. It's not benefiting me, yeah. but realize that 
anything that you do in any way that you move your body, and especially if it feels good to you, mm-hmm. is going to be a benefit, not just physically, but emotionally. And that's where everything else starts to change. Because once we start feeling wonderful in our bodies and our mind and our emotions follow suit. So yeah. you had said something along those lines earlier about how once you are doing something that feels really good and you're making that connection with moving and just doing what feels right, that it sort of impacts the rest of your life. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Because I think that's a compelling argument for yes. moving. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You know, oftentimes, you know, we have all our relationships with our, our husbands, our wives, our children, or, you know, everybody, our coworkers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you ever notice, if you get in an argument with someone, it's usually <laughs> whether, you know, it's, it's because we're not feeling our best selves. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get in an argument yes. with someone when you're just like, oh, I'm having the best day of my life. Yeah, you don't care. <laughs> you're just like, whatever. Right? And even if it's something that's really important and, and it's, yeah. a, uh, it's a deep conversation, you can have that conversation in a lighter way, a more yeah. open and understanding way. And when we move our bodies and we've got the endorphins going mm-hmm. and we're just feeling lighter, it really does change our body chemistry that our mind and our emotions just sort of, it's like we relax a little bit more, yeah. right? Like yeah. it's, it's actually, it's not that big of a deal. Like the situation can be resolved and, you know, and we just start moving in the world in a little, just more, we're a little bit more conscious yeah. and we're a little less attached to all the issues. <laughs> and there's so many. <laughs> We're just like, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> it's like going to the spa, right? Yeah. You go to the spa and you feel awesome. You've had your massage, you were in the sauna and you're just like, I don't have a care in the world. And yeah. you enter the real world, right? You enter right. the real world, but you're, you're, but you're still kind of calm and you're just like, nope, nope, nope. I'm not going to allow anything to, yeah. to ruin this feeling, you know? When we work out, we get the similar feeling, right? right. But it, it's, it's much longer. It prolongs. So we can work out in the morning and then we start our day and we're just like, yeah, everything's great. And yes, sometimes things come up and it's like, right. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're more, more likely to maintain that sense of calm in our bodies oh, if, okay. we, if we do it on a regular basis. And so, and I always, I say this to my children, I'm like, it's the butterfly effect, right? Like yeah. if you're, if you're super happy, you know, you feel great in your body, you feel emotionally, you know, regulated and you go and talk to a friend who's having a ho-hum day and they're like, oh, you're so, you're so calm and, and just happy. And then they start feeling calm and happy and it just starts to, you know, it moves right. along, but it can, it also goes the opposite way. It's like road rage, you know? Uh-huh. It can ruin everything for everyone that you meet. Yes, exactly. If you have had a bad commute into work, suddenly everybody else is having a bad day too when they meet you. I always say if, if everyone started the day with either stretching, moving their body, and a little, you know, conscious meditation, just yeah. breathing, like the world would be just so calm and peaceful. Um, but, you know, we all can just do our, our little part. Right. How do you recommend people, um, those who are going to say, I don't have time, which we've all said that before. It's an amazing excuse because it's, it can be true. But mm-hmm. those who say they don't have time for not only exercise, but also women tend to say, oh, I don't have time for self-care. I'm busy caring for everybody else. Mm-hmm. How do you recommend that we change our mindset a bit and really hold that appointment with ourselves for our own well-being? Wonderful question. You know, I would say if we look at our lives, if we evaluate what's going on in our lives mm-hmm. and what our daily routine looks like, you know, many of us like to go to the cafe, mm-hmm. get that Starbucks coffee, yeah. and then, you know, <laughs> we, if we can make time to do those things, we can make time to do a little self care. And so, what I like to suggest is that. One, we take a, we be honest with ourselves about mm-hmm. where we're putting our energy and our mm-hmm. attention to, right? And mm-hmm. think about what are the most important parts of my life. So, as a mother, I say, you know, the most important part of my life are my two little boys, mm-hmm. you know, and I do absolutely anything for them. But I also know that if I'm just super tired and drained and grumpy, I'm 
I'm doing absolutely nothing for them. I'm providing them with a disservice. So it is really important for me to feel and be my absolute best self. Mm -hmm. So what that looks like is, you know, getting up in the morning and stretching and meditating and then, you know, just starting my routine and feeling inside my body and connecting. So that's where that motivation comes. I'm thinking, okay, why am I doing this? Why would I do this? Right. Besides, yes, wanting to feel good yeah. and, um, you know, living a long time. <laughs> being yeah, healthy. that too. That's good. You know? <laughs> and so it's like looking at, okay, what are my priorities right now? And being very serious and honest with ourselves. And that can be hard, right? Because we yes. can say, I don't have the time, but we do have the time because we have time to sit and watch Netflix at 10 o'clock at night. Sure do. Or we... <laughs> Right. But you could probably, you know, take that hour of Netflix and cut it in half and take 30 minutes yeah. before and say, you know what, if I'm going to do Netflix, that's going to be my reward for mm-hmm. doing my 30 minutes of activity. You know, yeah. so yeah. there are ways to we can negotiate with ourselves. Like if, if self-care is really important to us and we mm-hmm. want that to become a part of our life, then we do need to make some concessions. But once we make those, it won't feel like a concession. It's going to be like, oh, why haven't I done this? Yeah much sooner. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, it just it isn't that much to add in 20 or 30 minutes of movement. And that's all we're saying, movement. We're not talking about training. A movement, right, exactly. Movement. You don't need to go and hire a personal trainer yeah. and get in the gym and, you know, no, no. it's just move your body. And and your body will tell you what else it needs because yeah. you might just start with stretching in the morning and then suddenly you're like, oh, I really want to go for a jog, you know, yeah. or I really want to, you know, I want to go get on the bike. I want to walk the beach. Yeah. You, you know, our bodies are, will tell us your intuition will tell you and yeah. you won't have, you won't be fighting it. And that's the fun part is that you'll be like, oh, I actually would rather go for a jog yeah. than sit and watch an hour of Netflix. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't know who that person is because that's not me, but somebody out there might say that. I mean, I love Netflix, but yeah, but it's in my calendar, you know. So. I watch it while on my treadmill in the basement. And that's a great yeah. idea, right? Combining the two. You can do that. I do that yeah. um, when I stretch at night, you know, yeah. it's like combining the two and it doesn't feel like work. It's not yeah. painstaking. So I'm like, oh my gosh, now I've got, I have to do this. You can enjoy yeah. both of both the it doesn't have to suck. It just doesn't. That's You're not going to make this a lifestyle thing if you right. hate it, no matter what the movement is. If there's something you'll like, and if you haven't found it yet, you don't have to hate movement. <laughs> right. I think that's – there's so many – there's so many things out there, right? Yeah. There's all, constantly, there's like, do this program and that program and join this thing, and, that thing. Yeah. and it's like, oh my gosh, you don't have to do that. If you want to, yeah. great. If, if that's your, your style and you like to have, you know, go watch a video it. and do that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Go for it. But that's not, it's not necessary. That's not the only way that you're going to be healthy, you know? So, yeah. and depending on what your goals are, you know, you'll know if you decide tomorrow that you want to be a, you know, a fitness model, or, you know, a bodybuilder, well, then you might need to go a little yeah. further and get a trainer for that, you know, yeah, exactly. but, <laughs> but if you're really just wanting to reconnect with your body and just feel really present and, mm-hmm. and connected, then you just, just start, just start moving and don't, yeah. you know, at first you might feel silly, you know, yeah. and like close, close the blinds, you know, turn on some music and, right. and just move and just move and just remember right. how children move. Right? They're yes, no inhibitors. They're the best model. <laughs> they do not care. They're just like, yeah, I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance. <laughs> I'm like, we can do that too. Like, what what has happened yeah. with us as adults? And we're like, oh no, only children do that. Well, maybe we should do more of that. Absolutely. In our and, you know, so maybe much. make yourself a little playlist. I have, when I do this, which I hope my husband does not hear me saying this right now because I don't want him <laughs> to know. But when I do that, I have a playlist that. <laughs> I call it my frat playlist because it reminds me of when I would actually go dancing in college at frat parties and it can, I can get down to that stuff. So find something, make it fun, maybe even connect yes. it to some great memories like that, you know? Yes, exactly. And, and that, I think reconnecting with that kind of that childlike yes. behavior yes. is good for us. You know, we're so serious all the time. It is, it's great to let loose and just right. be like, oh, this actually is a part of 
who I am. Yeah. And, you know, I don't have to adult all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, pay your bills, but otherwise, no. Right. Not right. Fun. <laughs> bills are paid. Okay, everything else is good. <laughs> That's I, your idea of really being more childlike. I think that's a good place to start because first of all, you're right. They do not care. No. <laughs> but you know, think about if you have children, think about you know, what would your kid do right now? Yeah. You, know, you could jam out to the Wiggles too, if you wanted. There's, yes. <laughs> I mean, there's, they do what they feel like. And of course, uh, sometimes it's not always good that children just do what they feel like, but connecting to that just kind of unbridled joy. Yes. I think it's, it's a good way to make moving something that we've made so freaking hard to make it more fun and to make it easier and something that you could actually do in your daily life. Yes. And, you know, even so starting that, bringing in that childlike behavior into your, you know, exercise routine or your, yeah. your mindfulness routine, but it starts to that lightness and that sort of, you know, just being very yeah. being open you know, starts to kind of come, come back to seeping into the rest of your life. So if you find yourself being like super stressed at work, um, yeah. it just, we all do. We're just, just like, yeah, you know, be a little silly now and then. And just remember that it's okay. That's part of our personalities. It's part of being human. Yeah. And that's what makes life interesting and fun. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's like, just have fun with it. You know, that's, for me, that's the important part. I'm like, if I'm not having fun, then I'm not doing it. And yeah, that's uh, a good rule. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> write it down. You know, I'm going to have a big poster made. If I'm not having fun, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Don't ask me to do it. Um, so, you know, just, yeah, I would just say like, sit down with yourself, be honest, like, what are your priorities? Mm -hmm. Um, what are some things that you love to do or you used to do when you were a child? Like, what were yeah. some things that you like to do? Did you like to just run around? Okay. Did you like yeah. to dance? Did you, um, did you, were you, did you take ballet? Were yeah. you, you know, like, what are some things that you can reconnect with that you did as a child and see how that can be brought back into your life now? Yeah. You know, thinking about that, looking back to what you enjoyed as a child, there, uh, our generation has been so delightful in trying to bring back our childhoods because you have every type of adult class that you had when you were a kid. Yes. You, you can play <laughs> kickball. You can go to adult gymnastics. You can go to adult ballet class. I mean, they have everything. I, I'm i going to sign up for an adult tap class. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> and all of these things that were just so fun as a kid now you can do it and truly not care and yes yeah, so you're just like I'm just gonna move I'm gonna have fun yeah. and and you know challenge challenges are always good too yeah. you know so like if you're coming back to dance like you did if you did tap when you were younger yeah. and you're gonna do it now and it's like oh I'm gonna challenge myself to get this choreography and it's like it's just fun you know and it's not just yeah. in the classroom but then you can take it home and you can practice oh yeah and and you just, you know, you feel proud of yourself. And it's just yeah. it's such a wonderful thing to have something that you can just integrate into right. your life on a regular basis. And that just feels good. Well, you know, we when we were kids, even through college with like intramurals and clubs and stuff, we had so much structure around these activities that we wanted to do. So it's a little bit harder as an adult to find things because, you know, nobody's really putting together an intramural like, water polo team for you. <laughs> so, right. So it might take a I'll little bit. <laughs> You might have to go on meetup.com. You might have to ask some friends, but connecting to that fun and games when yes. you were a kid, I mean, that was, think of how you just did not want to come in from recess. Like, just no way, no how. I just want to run around sweaty and, you know, climb all over everything. Yes. I mean, and, and we can do that still. We can. Like, <laughs> Unfortunately, can now we have to pay for it, but <laughs> we still can. Definitely. So there's, and I love that you brought up Meetup. So Meetup is a great yeah, place. Awesome. It's a great place, great resource to find, you know, like-minded yeah. people who are, you know, in a similar position as you. And you're like, okay, I'm, I'm wanting to get back into moving and I think my thing is hiking, right? Yeah. So let me find that, you know, novice hiking club and we go hiking. It's out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely you out want there. is out there and you can start a Meetup too if you're really into something. And uh, even the weirdest stuff out there, <laughs> my mom's community, it's a senior community, so I can't go join the league, but her community <laughs> has a pickleball league. I mean, even down to like some of the strangest things, like 
you can find some others who are like, sure, I'll try. <laughs> That's crazy. Pick a ball. I love it. <laughs> and, you know, community centers. It, if you don't live in a big city like I do, you can check out some of the community centers or the YMCA you might have. Or yes. even, you know, you might even be able to just gather some folks together wherever your track is at your local high school and do something. Right. Those are great ideas. Yeah. How do you, now switching over to mindfulness a bit, how do you use mindfulness and this intuition to really spark the motivation? You had said something earlier about when you feel good, you know, you're motivated to keep going, keep doing it. How can we stay in that mindset of feeling really good, therefore wanting to keep moving and make healthy choices? Yes. So mindfulness is one of those things that seems really hard. Well, it seems easy Mm -hmm. and hard at the same time. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You know, so when I, when I work with my clients and they're not really familiar with mindfulness or meditation or anything like that, you know, I always start, you know, okay, at the beginning, you know, how do you want to feel? Right. So we talk about how do you want to feel and how do you want to move in the world? And really it's like, I want to be joyous and I want to feel, you know, calm and centered grounded, you know, so meditation is always a great place to start. And I Mm -hmm. say meditation doesn't have to be painstaking. It doesn't have to be something that you don't have to sit for an hour trying to quiet your mind (laughs) because trust me, I have such mind chatter that it's like, Oh yeah. (laughs) Constantly. (laughs) Yeah. Constantly. And, and, you know, I will sit for an hour, but I know that, you know, the object of the game is not necessarily to shut my thoughts Mm -hmm. off down, you know, is really just to ground down and to release any, you know, tension and, um, anxiety I might have going on in my body. Yeah. Now, so for beginners, you know, I say, Starting your morning is a great way, like five minutes. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. Just sitting down, closing your eyes, and just listening to your breath. And so oh. you're not trying to do anything. You're just trying to sit. And you're, yeah. you're trying not to, basically, we're trying not to rush into our day, right. you know, open up our phone and look at our calendar and mm-hmm. check Facebook and all that before we've we've actually Who, connected. Us? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, That's weird. <laughs> So it's like before we start entering that world, right, we take a moment, we've we've woken up from our dream state, we're just going to sit down and we're going to connect with ourselves, you know, just for, just for five minutes. If you have more than five minutes, go for it. Mm -hmm. But five minutes is pretty much all you need. Just sit there, close your eyes, just be like, okay, good morning, (laughs) Kelly. You know, you know, I like to set my intentions as well. And I always ask myself, you know, or if you believe in a higher, higher power, I say, you know, what do you, what would you like me to do? Where would you like me to go? What would you have me to say? And to whom, um, Marion Williamson also offers that as a way to connect with yourself. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And so it basically, you open yourself to kind of downloading whatever it is that you need to know for the day. Mm. And it could be as simple as just a cool way to put it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just like, you know, um, just Usually I get something, you know, if I don't get anything, yeah. it comes to me later in the day. I'll be like driving and I'll be like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh-huh. Or it's just about like, no, just relax today. Like just keep, keep things simple. Right. And yeah. if it's a busy day ahead, you know, you already know kind of what your schedule's going to be like. It allows you just right. to, to ground yourself and feel like, okay, you know, I'm calm and you move into your day, um, feeling centered. And typically yeah. when I do this in the morning, I don't want to go on Facebook. I don't want to mm-hmm. check my phone right away. So I'm able to start moving through my day and I'm calm and I'm not, you know, mm-hmm. not agitated. Um, it also helps when you may have not slept very well. You know, it's kind yeah. of that, that little reboot you might need. Yes. Like it's almost like a cat nap um, before oh, your day starts. Wow. So sometimes I wake up agitated for some sort of weird yeah. dream. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> So that's a good way to start the day. And then throughout the day, you know, being mindful of how we're moving and recognizing that, you know, we as humans, we're all in this together, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and even though we have our own to do's, we have our own, our jobs and places to be that, you know, when we get on the freeway, like, okay, we're all, we're all headed somewhere, right? right? We're and all so annoyed. Like, we're all in traffic. Yeah. <laughs> Right. But it's like, if I were just a little less annoyed and just kind of went, got, go with the flow, yeah. 
typically my my mantra is like go with the flow just be present in whatever is going on in the moment whether it's good bad or ugly just be present and recognize there's always something to be had or to um be learned from any particular experience you know so if you're sitting in gridlock traffic and you're not (laughs) moving and people are honking and it's like what can I learn from this situation (laughs) or how can I yeah it's like how can I ground myself while all of this is happening and if you can be grounded and centered while you're stuck in traffic and people are yelling and screaming and honking like you're (laughs) like oh wow I've got this down. Yeah, like, you can do it anywhere. <laughs> if you can find peace in traffic, you can do it anywhere. And, you know, sometimes that I, I understand. I, mean, I live in D.C. I understand traffic. Absolutely. And it's irritating and it's awful. And I'll disclose something to the listeners out there. About 10 years ago, I had to take an address, an aggressive driving course because of points on my license. Oh. And in that course, they taught me something that has stuck with me for years and has not put any more points on my license, by the way, is that you're not going to get anywhere by being more aggressive or angrier. You are not going to get there faster. You're not going to save time. And when I sit in traffic and I think, okay, all right, (laughs) you're not going to get anywhere any faster. You're not going to save anything by honking and being angry it, it's like, okay, calm down, calm down. And then you can find that moment. And then you think, all right, well, maybe I'll listen to a podcast or maybe I'll listen to the radio or, in, you know, right. have something good in that time. Cause you're sitting there no matter what. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you saying that, um, an experience I had just yesterday, actually, and I was, it was speaking on this yesterday, I was driving, I dropped my children off from school and I get in the car to come home and I drive a little SUV and there was this little red car behind me and he was just like frantic, like, he, the, like there's no place to go, you know, I'm just driving and I'm just, you know, okay, it's like, you can't do anything. <laughs> he's frantic and he's like, okay, I'm going to move over to the next speed lane and I'm going to move back to behind her and I'm going to go back and I'm, and I'm thinking, we're all in the same boat here. Right. I just enjoy Where are you it. going? Like, exactly what you're thinking is like what you're saying, like put on a podcast, listen to some music. Right. Like where I'm like, you know, if you're late, I'm sorry. But you know what? Sometimes it, it all works out. Mm-hmm. You know what? Like maybe your boss is late too, and you're gonna right. get there before him. <laughs> or her. Uh, you know, you're still no matter what, you're gonna be late. So Yeah. It, it takes well enjoy a lot. the process while you're, <laughs> you're it sitting. It takes a lot to continually tell yourself. I mean, like I said, it was 10 years ago that I learned that, and I'm finally putting it into effect. But to keep telling yourself that sometimes you just need to keep repeating it. Keep saying, yes. okay, just be right here. You can't do anything about this. There's nothing you can change. And then, you know, once you can, reset. You know, take a walk or give yourself five minutes of silence. It's, yeah. Once you get out of that situation, it, it makes life a bit easier, even though you feel like by doing this, you're wasting time and you're going to take longer if you don't like slow down the frantic pace. Even if you're not sitting in traffic, if you're just frantic, period, you're not helping anything. You're not going to get there anywhere faster. You're not going to save the world or win a prize. And right. it, it, it's tough to get in that mindset, isn't it? It really, it really is tough. And, you know, there's a technique called TP. It's a French uh, emotional regulation. I don't know that one. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, um, it was created by a man named, a researcher in France named Luc Nicon. And he, it's basically um, a way of visualizing and monitoring the way your body feels, you know, oh. so it's like sensory. So whenever, don't close your eyes when you do this, if you're driving. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> But essentially, it's whenever we're feeling anxious, we have some some sort of emotion that's is yeah. it's not um, benefiting us, right? Yeah. We find there's going to be a physical sensation. So, say you're like really really upset with someone, or you right. you um, you're sitting in traffic and you you hate it, right? So, yeah. you start feeling like this tightness in your chest or something in your throat, and basically, TP is that you recognize where that that sensation is, and then you just mm-hmm just you just basically you stop and then you follow oh. the sensation put your focus on where the sensation yeah. is and you're going to notice you know the sensation moves from your throat to your mm-hmm. chest 
maybe it moves to your back, move it, move yeah. it goes down, and then it starts to just dissipate. And yeah. you'll recognize, and then after, so it's almost like a little mind trick that you've, you've put your focus, one, you, you're, you're in the moment with this yeah. emotion, in that situation, and you follow the emotion through your body until it releases yeah. itself. And the amazing, oh my gosh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> the amazing thing about TP is that it um, usually, if you do it once, twice, maybe three times in that particular situation, you won't feel that way again in that situation. Wow. So it's really connected. fun. So it's a neat trick. <laughs> and um, there's yeah. also, so in the US, the, the director of TP, his name is Cedric uh, Bertelli. And so he does all these sort of trainings on it. Wow. And um, I'm a TP specialist and I train with him and he's wonderful. So something, oh for anyone, you can do it on yourself. You know, you don't yeah. have to be certified in it to do it. So it's a really great technique. I mean, that's a great way to bring this full circle of being present and aware, but also, you know, feeling your body and where you yeah. are. And even just in a frantic moment when you find, you know, find that toughness, you know, sometimes it's right here on your chest. For me, it's always like that heavy chest. Yes. And then following it, that's the body awareness. If you can master that, you know, through your movement, your finding where your upset and emotion is, that connection with your mind and body is powerful. And yes. I mean, we've seen today from Kenya how many ways that you can do this and really kind of set yourself up for success at the beginning of the day and then rescue yourself later if you need a little teepee action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, this was so helpful. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much, Kelly. It's been wonderful.